Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. All right, so a little bit of a tough subject today on the show. We're actually talking about uh, what happens when you die, specifically, what happens to your student loans when you die. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. A credit union that offers Bitcoin? Give me five. (laughs) For a limited time only, get $5 of free Bitcoin through the Southland Credit Union app. Enrollment is quick and easy. There's no hidden fees, and you can conveniently fund Bitcoin purchases directly from a Southland account. Claim your free Bitcoin today by going to thecollegeinvestor.com slash Southland. Bitcoin accounts and services provided by NIDIG. Not NCUA insured. Restrictions apply to Bitcoin bonus. See terms. And don't forget to check out thecollegeinvestor.com slash Southland to sign up. Okay, so back to the topic at hand for today. What happens to your student loans after you die? Do your student loans actually die with you? meaning your family is free and clear, or will someone else have to experience the burden of your student loan debt? Are student loans forgiven at death? It's important to know what's going to happen, because if you don't follow these steps as outlined today, your family could be liable for your student loans. Not good. So recently, I discovered a couple of tragic stories as it relates to this that I just wanted to share with you about death and student loan debt. First, the story of Francisco Reynoso. This is the typical tragic story I read about when it comes to student loan debt. His son was accepted to Boston's Berkeley College of Music, but he needed student loans to pay for it. However, the federal student loans weren't enough, and so his son actually had to take out private loans as well. The trouble started when Francisco co-signed for the loans. So right after graduation, Francisco's son was tragically killed. But since Francisco co-signed the student loans for the banks, the debt was very much alive. After the death of his son, the banks started coming to him to try and collect the debt, as if losing his son wasn't enough. The sad part in all of this is that he is technically on the hook for the private student loans that he co-signed. So, definitely a case where the student loans didn't die. The second tragic story happens with Parent PLUS loans. While these are federal loans, they can still cause financial nightmares after the borrower dies. So, for example, the story of Roswell Friend. His mother took out $55,000 in Parent PLUS loans to pay for school. When he died, the government did the right thing and erased the debts since they were federal loans. However, since the debt was canceled and it was actually taken out by a parent, Sally Mae sent a 1099-C to the mother due to the cancellation of debt income. This left the mother with a tax bill of $14,000 due to the additional income. While not having to repay $55,000 is nice, this was still a ton of money to owe the government. All right, so when student loans actually do die with you, let's take a look at those circumstances. For most federal student loans, the debt is forgiven if the student or borrower dies. All that is required is that you provide the student loan servicing company with a certificate of death, and then the loan will be gone. This is true for these types of federal loans, direct subsidized loans, direct unsubsidized loans, direct consolidation loans, and federal Perkins loans. It's also true for private student loans as long as nobody co-signed the loan. Very important. If the student who died was the only borrower, the loan will die with them. Student loans that don't die. Quick note, through 2025, all student loans forgiven or discharged, regardless of the reason, are tax-free. However, there are two types of student loans that don't die with you. First, private student loans with a cosigner don't die. When someone cosigns the loan, a parent or somebody else, They are just as responsible for the loan as the student or borrower. That means if the student dies, the cosigner still has to pay the loan back. Second, PLUS loans can be a headache to deal with. 
While they technically are discharged, the parent who took out the loan could be left with a 1099-C, which increases your income and makes you pay taxes on the amount of the PLUS loan that was forgiven, which can be a lot, as we saw earlier. Now, here's how to protect yourself and your family. There are two very simple ways to protect yourself and make sure that your student loans don't cause problems for your whole family. First, never. Never co-sign a loan for school. Student loan debt is the worst debt to have, and it can be a huge burden to parents, especially in the time of grieving. Imagine! So if your student needs loans, stick to federal student loans. And number two, consider taking out life insurance on your college student until the debt you're liable for is gone. If you co-sign for $20,000, for example, consider just purchasing a life insurance policy worth $20,000 on your student. So the policy would be extremely inexpensive, like less than 10 bucks a month. But if something should happen, the insurance company and the money would be there to pay off the outstanding debt. You can look at a comparison tool like Policy Genius and see how easy it is to get a life insurance policy on a young, healthy person. In just a few minutes, you can see how inexpensive it would be. You can check out Policy Genius at thecollegeinvestor.com. We have so many resources for you and tools and tips and everything you could possibly know about student loan debt, how to pay it back, what you can do to avoid it, side hustle ideas, all of that at thecollegeinvestor.com. Thanks so much for being a part of the show today. We so greatly appreciate it. And we'll talk to you again real soon.